Hello students. So today we have to consider uh, anatomy of leaf. So as we have considered anatomy of root and stem, now we'll see anatomy of leaf. So similarly we have to consider anatomy of dicot leaf and monocot leaf. So basically we have uh, two types of leaf. Consider it according to the dicot and monocot. But moreover we consider it as a dorsiventral leaf and isobilateral leaf. So dorsi ventral leaf, the name itself suggests dorsi ventral. Both the surface means upper epidermis and lower epidermis of the leaf will not be identical. If the green color of upper epidermis and lower epidermis is not identical, then we call such a leaf as a dorsi ventral leaf. And the one who has the green coloration on both the surface or both the surface of leaf appear a similar then we call such a leaf as a isobilateral. Here, a dorsiventral leaf whose upper epidermis will be bright, bright green and lower epidermis will be dull green. Such a leaf we consider it as a dorsiventral leaf. And dorsiventral leaves are present in dicot. See, dorsiventral leaf or we can call them as a dicot leaf. So, dicot leaf are similarly or in dicot plant there will be presence of dorsiventral leaf. So, while considering anatomy, of dicot leaf or other dorsi ventral leaves, we will only observe a three part that is uh, epidermis, then we observe a mesophyll tissue, and finally, there will be presence of vascular bundle. So, these vascular bundles will be vary according to the size of a uh, vessel that, that we will consider in a later way. So, while considering a transverse section of leaf passing through the midway. We have to take a section of leaf and that section should be passing through the midrib. If that section is getting passing through the midrib, then there will be presence of a vascular bundle which will remain present in the midrib that also become visible to us. So here, your upper epidermis. So epidermal tissue which will be having adaxial and abaxial. Adaxial epidermis means upper epidermis. This will be considered as adaxial or upper and this will be your lower epidermis. So here adaxial epidermis will have a quite barrel shaped cells and these are compactly placed cells. Here in upper, upper epidermis is a single layer of single layer of compactly placed quite elongated cell. Single layer of compactly placed elongated cell. Only single layer of compactly placed without any intercellular space. Here you will not observe any intercellular space in the epidermis. Or most of the time the upper epidermis will not have presence of stomata also. Or if remain present, then there will be very few in number. So this adaxial surface probably they will have absence of stomata or there could be present very few stomata. This layer has a waxic cuticular covering. Here there is a presence of cuticle. See, both upper epidermis and lower epidermis both will have cuticle. Leaf will have distinct conspicuous cuticle. Leaf will have distinct conspicuous cuticle. So this is your upper epidermis. So upper epidermis is a single layer of compactly placed elongated cell. Without or few, without or few stomata. Most of the time stomata will remain absent on dorsiventral leaves at axial surface but sometimes they could remain present also but very few in number and there is a waxy cuticular covering. From this upper epidermis to this lower epidermis and there is a lower epidermis. So lower epidermis will show presence of stomata. Lower epidermis is characterized for the stomata. They will have stomata. Is there? And lower epidermis is also continuous layer, a single layer of a parent gamete cell, it again has a cuticle, it also has a cuticle, is there? Now from this upper epidermis to lower epidermis, the entire part, the entire tissue present from upper epidermis to lower epidermis, we call it as a mesophyll tissue. The name itself indicates meso, meso means middle and phyla means leaf. In between upper epidermis of leaf and lower epidermis of leaf, entire tissue which we consider it as a mesophyll tissue and mesophyll tissue is of parent gamma cell. The parent gamma cell which have a chloroplast. Here we consider the parent gamma cell which have chloroplast. These cells are considered as chlorine gamma. Normally we have called them as a 
parenchyma, but as these parenchyma have a chloroplast, so we call them as a chlorine gamma. And these parenchyma cells which have chloroplast are considered as a photosynthetic. So everywhere there will be presence of chloroplast in these parenchyma cell. And as they are present between the upper epidermis and lower epidermis, we call them mesopensae. अतः यह जो parent gamma cell है, यह parent gamma जो है, इसमें यंत्र मधे chloroplast असल में आपन जाने में तो chlorine gamma, आने यंत्र मधे chloroplast असल में उन्हें यह mesopensae cell मतलब यह जो parent gamma डे cell है, यह आज तक photosynthesis. So main role of leaf is having photosynthesis, and that happens here in a mesopensae. See, your upper epidermis and lower epidermal parent gamma cells are without chloroplast. Upper epidermal parent gamma and lower epidermal parent gamma do not have chloroplast. But the parent gamma which are present between upper epidermis and lower epidermis will have will have chloroplast deposited there. So we call them as a chlorine gamma. अतः यह जब मिसोपिन सेल मतलब parent gamma है, आप लोग ने दोनों प्रकार के एक अस्तर spongy parent gamma या एक अस्तर palisade parent gamma. अतः यह palisade parent gamma मुझे upper epidermis चाहे just below जब parent gamma है ना, the parent gamma which are present below the upper epidermis are palisade parent gamma and palisade parent gamma are elongated. Elongated and compactly placed, we have abundant or more chloroplasts in this cell. So these palisade parent gamma, see you can observe they are elongated and they are compactly placed without any intercellular spaces. Here you will not observe any intercellular spaces. The parent gamma which are present below below upper epidermis are considered as palisade parent gamma and palisade parent gamma are elongated, long. And they are compactly placed without any intercellular spaces. And as they are compactly placed without any intercellular spaces, see they have a more number of chloroplasts. As here you will observe, at the end of the day, the parent gamma cells are number just to the current that they are compactly placed. And then the chloroplasts just there. Because our water surface just the green is it? Water surface just the green is it? क्यों आ समझो तुम्हें जब ये तरीका सीख रहे थे कि यार इतना नहीं अस्तर या पैरेंट गैमों में दिया अस्तर या क्लोरोप्लास्ट है या पैरेंट गैमों में दिया अस्तर या क्लोरोप्लास्ट दोनों ही सार्क हैं तो त्याग वाला क्या होना तो यार इतना नहीं सेल चार नंबर जस्ट रस्ते मुझे हाफ कलर जस्ट ग्रीनडी सेल्स दूसरी पेस है, सेल्स का नंबर कमी है, सेल्स क्या मुझे ये हाँ सरफेस कमी ग्रीन दी से, सो दिस आर पैलेसिट पैरेंट गैमा सेल, अन्य पैलेसिट पैरेंट गैमा सेल जैसे ना ये जब मधे क्लोरोप्लास्ट है, लिया सेल इलोंगेटेड है ना, आई हाँ कॉम्पैक्टली प्लेस सेल है, अतः पैलेसिट पैरेंट गैमा and they are loosely spaced, loosely placed, having intercellular spaces. ये जो मतलब तुम्हारा intercellular spaces दिखते हैं, these are intercellular spaces. अन्य यह जो parent gamma cell है, these parent gamma cells are connected with the atmosphere through this stromatal opening. These parent gamma cells are connected with the external environment or atmosphere through this, through this stromatal pore. यार इकनी तुम्हारा एक stromatal pore दिखते हैं, अतः हाँ stromatal pore जो है, ये जो मुझे यस इकट्ठे तो जो space है जो air वगैरह है, तो ही एक ऐसी current जा रहा है मुझे Lower epidermis of the parent gamma cell is which we call spongy parent gamma cell. These spongy parent gamma cells are connected with the atmosphere through the stromatal pore. That is why parent gamma cell is the same as the same as the same as the These cells are loosely placed and the same as the air space. And these air spaces are the same as the air space. So these air spaces are the same as the air space. So these are the gaseous exchange. This space is the same as the substromatal space. We call substromatal space. तो यह substromatal space में दी यहाँ से water loss वगैरह जी करना है। कारण stromata are mean for having loss of water. Transpiration ही process stromata करता है। As well as gaseous। मतलब atmospheric CO2 जो हम यह cell ला रहना है for photosynthesis। तो तो यह stromata मतलब दांत मत जाना। आनी यह cell करता है जी water loss कराया जाए तो तो बने यह ठीक नहीं है ना। मैं यह substromatal space में दी ये loss करने से दी as well as जो water है। तो that will get accumulated here. इन सब स्ट्रोमेटल स्पेस अन्य ये सब स्ट्रोमेटल स्पेस में तो जब वो स्ट्रोमेटा ऊपर होना तो ये वाला है वाटर लॉस के लिए जाना सिमिलरली एटमॉस्फेयर में तो सीओ2 असना तो सीओ2 जर लीफ ला फोटोसिंथेसिस अड़ी आत्मा दिखे जब सब स्ट्रोमेटा ऊपर होना अन्य ये चमत्कार नहीं सीओ2 आत्मा जाना सो दिस स्ट्रोमेटा आर प 
So whatever the gaseous exchange or whatever the loss of water they have to do, so there is a need of substomatal space. So here you will observe substomatal space. And why here you will observe substomatal space? Because the spongy parenchyma cells are loosely placed. Because here the spongy parenchyma cells are loosely placed. As spongy parenchyma cells are loosely placed, so there will be presence of substomatal cavity. Substomatal cavity or substomatal space is mean for having accumulation of gases which has to either lodge or the collective center for the gases which has to be utilized by the parenchyma cell. So this is your spongy parenchyma cell. Here there is a differentiation of parenchyma cell in the mesophyll region. So here two differentiated parenchyma cell will be present that is spongy parenchyma and palisade parenchyma. The major difference is spongy and palisade. Palisade parenchyma are long elongated and compactly placed and spongy parenchyma are oval spherical or circular and they are loosely placed. So spongy parenchyma will remain present toward, uh, sorry, spongy parenchyma will remain present toward lower epidermis and palisade parenchyma will remain present toward upper epidermis, that is adhesive epidermis. So this is uh, epidermis and mesophyll cell. Now we have to consider the most important part, which is mean for having conduction of water, that is water and food, that is vascular bundle. So here, the vascular bundles are numerous in number and their size depends on their size depends on the size of your veins or mid vein means whatever type of vascularization or venation will be there in that case the size of vascular bundle depends on the venation or rather veins and venlets or mid vein so uh, large size you will observe large size mid vein so these mid vein will have a large size vascular bundle because in mid vein there is a presence of mid veins are quite prominent and as mid veins are prominent the, their vascular bundle will be of large size so as you will move on the veins there will be presence of vein so these veins mid vein vein and venlets they are all of different size they are all of different size so the vascular bundle which is present in mid vein will be quite large size the vascular bundle which is present in the vein will be quite or uh, it will have quite a smaller size so the uh, vascular bundle size depends on the size of vascular bundle depends on the size of your veins so here you will observe vascular bundles of variable size then here what you will consider we consider a vascular bundle have a parent diameter see thin walled parent diameter cells are there present there around your vascular bundle which we call bundle sheet cell. bundle sheet this seed, अतः ये जो है जो vascular bundle है क्या vascular bundle है एक prominent layer है outer layer कि ये जो बहुत ही आलिंग क्या layer लाभ में तो bundle अरे ये bundle seed cell दे रहा है ना कि parent gamma डस cell दे रहा है ना this bundle seed cell is of parent gamma cell so this bundle seed cell is there covering your vascular bundle rather than vascular bundle will be present in mid vein vein so there will be this covering of parent gamma डस cell which we call bundle seed cell अतः यह देखा है जो vascular bundle है या वास्कुलर बंडल में देखिए यू विल ऑब्जर्व अ फ्लोएम फ्लोएम टुवर्ड लोअर एपिडर्मिस एंड हियर यू विल ऑब्जर्व जाइलेम जाइलेम टुवर्ड अपर एपिडर्मिस सो दिस टाइप ऑफ वास्कुलर बंडल इज कॉल्ड कॉनजॉइंट कोलैटरल कोलैटरल एंड डेफिनेटली दिस वास्कुलर बंडल इज गोइंग टू बी क्लोज टाइप ऑफ वास्कुलर बंडल दिस वास्कुलर बंडल इज अ क्लोज टाइप ऑफ वास्कुलर बंडल व्हाई this vascular bundle is of closed type because in between xylem and phloem there will be complete absence of cambium and as there is a complete absence of cambium why there is a complete absence of cambium because root don't have to have a thickness root la thickness attain karna hai chine roots are not thick they don't have to increase the size of their girth so because of that here there is a absence of here there is absence of vascular cambium and as there is absence of vascular cambium we call them as a Close type of vascular bundle. Here there is a complete absence of vascular cambium, so we call them as a close type of vascular bundle. This vascular bundle is conjoint and collateral type. Vascular bundles are of variable size. Here vascular bundles are of variable size, depend on the size of veins. Vascular bundles of variable size and their size depends on the uh, size of your veins. So this is all about uh, anatomy of dipod root or dorsiventral root. In dorsi ventral root, upper epidermis and lower epidermis that is ataxial and abaxial.
Then there is a mesophyll tissue. Mesophyll tissue is differentiated into palisade mesophyll tissue and spongy mesophyll tissue. Then there is the presence of vascular bundle. Vascular bundle uh, has a bundle sheet cell, specialized sheet cell, and vascular bundles are of variable size, depend on the size of veins welded and midway. Then vascular bundle is of conjoint collateral, and this vascular bundle is closed side. Why vascular bundle is closed side? Because there is an absence of vascular cambium. As vascular cambium is absent, there will be no secondary growth present. Here is the leaf. Leaf don't have to have, rather that leaf will be dicot leaf or monocot leaf. They don't have to have a secondary growth. As there is a, there is no need of having increasing thickness of leaf. So there is absence of vascular cambium. And as there is absence of vascular cambium, we call such a vascular bundle as a closed type of vascular bundle. But here vascular bundle has a differentiating bundle sheet cell of parenchymatous. Remember one thing. Upper epidermis and lower epidermis, both the epidermis has a parenchyma cell, but these parenchyma cell will not have chloroplast. So these epidermal cell will not have able will not be able to have photosynthesis. Upper epidermis and lower epidermis both has a cuticle. Leaves both the surface has a cuticle. Then upper epidermis will not show presence of stomata, or sometimes they will have very few stomata, but lower epidermis will have presence of stomata. Toward lower epidermis, there is a substomatal species which has been left behind by your loosely placed parent gamma cell and your palisade cell which are uh, present towards upper epidermis they are compactly placed there is a no uh, there, there is a no intercellular space is present in between them and here your vascular bundle is there so this is a dorsiventral or dicot leaf now we have to consider monocot leaf so here we will consider anatomy of isobilateral leaf or monocot leaf so monocot has isobilateral leaf means their both the surfaces are identical. So these leaves are mostly placed in a vertical position on the plant. And uh, in dicot these leaves are present in horizontal position likewise. Here uh, as they are present vertically so their both the surface will get similarly exposed to the light. So now we have to consider uh, similarly uh, as we will take a transverse section of these leaves. So we will observe uh, almost similar things that is upper epidermis, lower epidermis, mesophyll tissue and vascular bundle. Here the venation is parallel venation as before we have considered uh, in uh, dicot venation is reticulate. In reticulate venation most of the veins are of uh, variable size but in parallel venation veins only veinlets are thick but veins are of same size. So here while considering isobilateral leaf why they are isobilateral because here there is a no distinction between your uh, uh, mesophyll cells toward upper epidermis and mesophyll cells toward lower epidermis here mesophyll cells will be of only type that is spongy mesophyll cell as these mesophyll cells are spongy mesophyll cells here we consider upper epidermis and here we consider lower epidermis both the epidermal surface will have presence of cuticle so almost everything remains same almost Everything remains same as that of anatomy of dicot leaf. But here we will consider certain differences. Here on up, upper epidermis and lower epidermis, both the epidermal surface will have stomata. In dicot, only lower, uh, lower epidermal surface uh, was having the presence of stomata. Here, upper as well as lower epidermal surface, both the epidermal surface has stomata. And so we call these leaves as the amphistomatic leaves. So we call Monocot leaf has the amphistomatic. Amphi means both. On the both the epidermal, uh, epidermal surface, there is the presence of stomata. So we call them amphistomatic leaf. Amphistomata. Amphi means both stomata. Stomata on the both the epidermal surface, that is upper epidermis as well as lower epidermis. Here, your mesophyll cells are of only spongy mesophyll cell. Mesophyll cells are not discriminated or distinguished into spongy and palisade. Here, mesophyll cells are spongy and you are aware about spongy mesophyll cells are loosely placed and they will remain uh, intercellular spaces. So here there is a formation of substromatal space toward lower epidermis and substromatal space toward upper epidermis as both the epidermal surface has stomata. So this substromatal space is very much important for having uh, inducing a gaseous exchange. So this is all about their epidermis and a mesophyll cell. Now we will consider their vascular bundle. So their vascular bundle is also uh, identical to the vascular bundle of your dicot leaf. Here there is also presence of bundle sheet cell and here there is also presence of phloem and xylem. And there is no presence of, similarly, 
there is no presence of cambium so these vascular bundles are closed type of vascular bundle so vascular bundles are conjoint collateral and closed as we have considered dicot also vascular bundle was conjoint collateral and closed here too uh, means leaf will not possess a vascular cambium or uh, uh, vascular bundle in leaf is, will always be closed type of vascular bundle here only difference which we have to consider is having a presence of bully form cell here there is a presence of bully form cell on the adaxial or upper epidermal surface of monocot leaf in most of in, uh, grasses you will observe it adaxial or upper epidermal surface of these leaf or monocot leaf have a specialized cell these cells are large size these cells are large size they are colorless cells are large size they are colorless and these cells are specialized for controlling the water stress on the leaf so we call these cells are the bully form cell so how bully form cell is going to control the water stress yancha upper epidermal surface what the specialized cell asta ja colorless asta ja rather large size cell asta to ya cell kay karta to ya cell apan bully form cell bolto we call them bully form cell ya cell cha function kay तो ज्यादा बुलिफॉर्म सेल मे वॉटर जास्त बुलिफॉर्म सेल टर्जीर टर्जी फुल्ली टर्जीर लीफ सरफेस वरती एक टर्जिडिटी इंड्यूस होना लीफ च शेप इंटैक्ट मेटेन रहना इंटैक्ट मेटेन रहना प्याला बुलिफॉर्म सेल वी लॉस इज वॉटर बुलिफॉर्म सेल वी लॉस इज वॉटर दैट टाइम बुलिफॉर्म सेल विल बिकम फ्लैशीड एंड एज बुलिफॉर्म सेल विल बिकम फ्लैशीड देअर लीफ विल गेट कल and as their leaf will get curl so their uh, loss of water or rate of transpiration will go on decrease so this mechanism see what happens bully form cell madhe jeva water water absorb kele jata tya vela bully form cell hai turgid hota turgid hota manje fully stretch hota stretch atle mule tumche leaf hai intact open rahta leaf hai purna tyata ek rigid shape rahto pan ja vela bully form cell madhe water loss jala tya vela bully form cell ch ka hota shrink hun jana ani tya jeva shrink hona tar tya vela te leaf la sa curl karta आता हे लीफ जर कल तो यह लीफ लगन लगना नहीं आर ऊन लगल नहीं लीफ मत वॉटर बाहर जा रही सो दिस मेकैनिजम और हैविंग अ प्रेजेंस ऑफ बुलिफॉर्म सेल इन मोस्ट ऑफ ग्रासेस इज अ मेकैनिजम टू प्रोटेक्ट देम फ्रॉम अ लॉस ऑफ वॉटर सो दिस मेकैनिजम इज ऑपरेटेड बाय द बुलिफॉर्म सेल और दिस मेकैनिजम इज रेग्युलेटेड बाय द टर्जिडिटी एंड फ्लैसिडिटी ऑफ बुलिफॉर्म सेल सो बुलिफॉर्म सेल्स आर ओनली प्रेजेंट इन मोस्ट ऑफ ग्रासेस and they are present on the upper epidermal surface these are specialized cell which are large colorless cell and they are mean for having controlling the or rather uh, they are mean to prevent the excessive loss of water so how they prevent loss of water whenever they will become flaccid they they will get shrink and as this bully form cells on upper epidermis will get shrink so definitely that leaf has to get curl and as leaf will get curl so less surface will be exposed to the light or sunlight and as less surface is exposed to the sunlight so less water will get uh, lost through it either so this is your monocot leaf so in monocot and dicot leaf you just have to remember the differences the major difference remains with the mesophyll cell so there in dicot mesophyll cells are differentiated into sp uh, spongy and palisy here only spongy type of mesophyll cells are present is there vascular bundle in both remains same only size of vascular bundle will uh, uh, more vary in your dicot as compared to the monocot because in monocot there is a parallel veins and almost all veins are of similar size then uh, bully form cells are present on uh, upper epidermal surface of dicot and remain absent in the uh, sorry upper epidermal surface of monocot and remain absent in the dicot uh, here somata are present on the both the uh, surfaces upper epidermis as well as lower epidermis in monocot and somata are present only on lower epidermal surface in dicot these certain different things you have to remember about the anatomy of dicot and monocot leaf is there so why uh, monocot leaf is iso bilateral because here here uh, towards the upper epidermal surface and towards lower epidermal surface at uh, towards both the epidermal surface there is a presence of only parent spongy parent gamma cell so there will be no discrimination of color as there is a no discrimination of cell type mesophyll cell type so there is no discrimination of a uh, coloration so both the surface of this leaf will appear identical and so we call them as the iso bilateral so this is anatomy of monocot is there